Delhi was hit by a 4.0 magnitude earthquake on February 17th and it led to widespread panic among residents of the national capital region. But let's explain to you why an earthquake occurs and is it normal for a quake to jolt the national capital? An earthquake is the sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust, which is the outermost layer. This happens millions of times across the world. It's no unnatural or unknown phenomena, but most are so small that we never even feel them. An earthquake is what happens when two blocks of the Earth essentially slip past one another. The surface where they slip, that entire area is called the fault or the fault plane. The spot on the surface just above where an earthquake starts is called the epicenter. That's where exactly the shift has taken place. And so seismic waves spread across from the epicenter based on how intense the quake is at the epicenter. Now, as the crust settles after an earthquake, another temblor called an aftershock can happen. And usually aftershocks aren't as powerful as the first quake, but can still be very, very strong. So where do earthquakes occur? Well, there are seven tectonic plates that make up our land. Essentially, what I'm talking about is giant slabs of rock, if you will. And it's when they clash that quakes happen on the surface. There are seven plates based on the regions they cover. The African, Antarctic, Eurasian, Indo-Australian, North American, Pacific and South American tectonic plates. About 80% of earthquakes actually occur along the rim of the Pacific Ocean, which is called the Ring of Fire because of the large number of volcanoes also there. And that area is a meeting point for many of these tectonic plates. So does this mean India is also prone to earthquakes? Well, yes and no. Only parts of India actually witness quakes and we've unfortunately seen some terrible tragedies like the Gujarat earthquake of 2001, which occurred in Bhuj. Over 20,000 people had died in that tragedy. Geographical statistics of India show that almost 58% of the land of India is vulnerable to earthquakes. In North India, including the Himalayas, the collision of the Indian tectonic plates with the Eurasian plate contributes to earthquakes, the frequency of earthquakes there. There are five identified zones based on risk of zones, zone five being the highest level, so zone one the lowest. And parts of Kashmir, parts of Bihar, the run of Kutch, parts close to the Himalayas essentially are in the very high damage risk zone, zone five. Delhi, Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, North and Northeastern states fall in the zone four category, which is the high damage risk zone. Delhi has felt tremors, yes, every few months, whenever the epicenter is close to the Himalayas. And since 1720, the city has been rocked by at least five earthquakes above 5.5 magnitude on the Richter scale. And that's why there is a significant risk in Delhi, which experts warn could be a problem for Delhiites, primarily because buildings in the national capital aren't even quake-proof, despite being in a risk zone. But the biggest factor to avoid a disaster can we predict an earthquake? Well, that's the biggest challenge. Unlike natural disasters like a weather pattern, which you can predict, experts cannot tell you when a quake is about to strike, when it could hit. So the only indicators are quake-prone zones and nothing more.